So we all associate Android with smartphones, not smart books, but Toshiba has broken the mold by packing Android 2.1 into its AC100. So on top of Toshiba's own regular skin, there's the instantly recognisable Android OS. It's just been optimised for a bigger screen, sporting the same screen res as the majority of netbooks. And you've got five home screens to fill with apps, shortcuts and widgets. And you can get it to bring up different screen setups based on your location or the Wi-Fi network you're connected to. And to make navigation easier, the main menu is split into four sections. That's apps, widgets, bookmarks and settings. There is one major downside though. There's no support for the Android market or indeed Google Apps. So all you've got to rely on is an app store for tablet devices or Android freeware sites which don't quite have the same quality or quantity as the Android market. Now annoyingly, if you do manage to install a useful application, just be aware that it might not render well on the 10 inch screen. Toshiba has tried to offset this lack of apps with pre-installed applications like Opera Mobile, documents to go for basic viewing and editing of your documents, there's a Toshiba media player for videos, music and photos, there's an ebook widget and there's a dedicated social network application. Now the social network widget is a little bit on the slow side, displaying old tweets and it doesn't like to refresh either, leaving you a little bit frustrated. Now when it comes to Android, the difference between this and a smartphone is the AC100 has no touchscreen action, which means you're gonna have to rely quite heavily on keyboard shortcuts, which are easy enough to use, they're just not particularly intuitive. For example, the tab key doesn't allow you to move between boxes or cells, escape works as the back key, as well as closing applications. There's also a switcher button for moving between running applications and dedicated keys for accessing email, the WebKit browser settings and the universal search. And a right mouse click also pulls up that all important Android submenu. Flicking through the home pages with the arrow keys would have been handy, which the AC100 does to an extent, but only once it's gone through some of the widgets on that page. So it's not particularly quick. And generally, usability is a tad annoying and you will feel the urge to reach out and tap that screen. And talking of the screen, it's decent enough to view all your pictures and videos on and is more than detailed enough for browsing the web. It's Android 2.1, so that means no flash and no online videos. And playback quality of video via the dedicated YouTube app isn't great. But hopefully web video will all be sorted with an upgrade to the flash toting Android 2.2. But web video aside, it handles 1080p video nice and smoothly, although obviously it's not a true representation of high definition. Now moving on to design, and the AC100 is a decent size and incredibly compact, measuring 14 millimeters at its thinnest point, and it really is lightweight, and despite all this, feels robust enough for a decent lifespan. And the full-size keyboard with its large keys is nice and comfortable to type on. There's no delete key though, which isn't really a big deal, but it's funny how much you miss it when it's not there. And the keyboard is complemented nicely with a spacious touchpad complete with scroll bar and two responsive buttons. And instead of the usual Atom processor found in most netbooks, the AC100 uses Nvidia's 1GHz Tegra 250 chip, which is based on the same kind of technology found in smartphones. And it's smooth and fast, even with multiple open applications. And it loads individual apps quickly and efficiently, delivers fast web browsing, and means it takes just 25 seconds to boot up. And thanks to its low power consumption, it has a long battery life of around eight hours of continual use. You'll also find an HDMI port for hooking it up to your high def TV and a 1.3 megapixel webcam. So with free onboard apps like Fring, you'll be able to make video calls. Now there are two models available, a Wi-Fi only version and a 3G model, which you'll be able to just pop your SIM into for web on the move. And browsing the web over 3G is nice and fast, especially when using the more efficient pre-installed Opera Mobile. And when flash isn't involved, web pages load quickly and completely. So as nice as the AC100 is, it's got great portability, build quality and speed, Android just feels a little bit out of place. And obviously there is an over-reliance on the keyboard, so without touch functionality we're not completely convinced Google's OS works on this platform, especially with the lack of applications. But it's a nice option if you're after super portability on a device with a great battery life with responsive operation. Now I wouldn't recommend it to Android newbies, but on a more positive note, the yellow embellishments add a rather nice touch and you can boot up and get on the web in less than a minute.